How do you break into any market, show up, kick butt, take names, and more importantly, lead from the front? How can you boost sales? How can you show up and either take your sales from zero to, to massive or scale if you're already crushing it right now and go to that next rung on the ladder? How can you sustain it? How can you grow it? How can you scale it? But more importantly, how can you do it with both authority and authenticity? We're going to be talking about how to do that with your business right here today on this episode of EMP's uh, Daily Dose of Awesome. Great to be with you guys on a Tuesday. My name is JT DeBolt, and as you're jumping out here, let me know who you are, where you are tuning in from on the Big Blue Marble so I can give you a personal shout out, and uh, welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whatever time it is for you, no matter where you might be tuning in from here on the Big Blue Marble. Thanks, as always, for joining us for the Elite Marketing Pro Daily Dose of Awesome, your 15 minutes of inspiration education and motivation to help you get your day started off right. What's up, Lisa Gentile coming in from Wisconsin. Tomas, how are you doing, my friend? Great to see you here. As always, a privilege and an honor to be with you guys. Lots of folks jumping out here. As, as, you know, I got to tell you, man, I'm pretty pumped about this. Been a couple of days since I've been out here. Uh, was away last week uh, in Los Angeles for the Fast Track Workshop, which was totally amazing. Got to work with some really great people. I got to tell you, man, the, the future of EMP is looking bright. So stoked to be able to work with our future leaders here in the company. Lots of folks jumping out here. Say hello as you do. And by the way, I'm going to be prepping quite a bit for the No Excuses event coming up here in June. Less than 30 days away. If you have not gotten your tickets yet, make sure you jump on that. We're going to have an amazing time. It's going to be in Las Vegas, Nevada, which is always a great deal of fun. But more importantly, we have the whole, the entire resort for ourselves. Imagine that. Just EMP is taking over this uh, hotel resort. It's going to be pretty awesome. Lots of amazing speakers coming out. Uh, I'm going to be there. Fernie's going to be there. TJ, Matt, everybody's going to be there. We're going to have our, our fast track facilitators and mentors out there. We're going to have our amazing community. We're going to have a blast. If you are serious about taking your business and your life to that next level, make sure you get yourself out there to No Excuses Summit. We're going to have a blast. All right. Good morning. <laughs> Lots of people coming out here. What's up, Tom? What's up, Chuck? What's, ta what's up, Tatiana? Good to see you all. Michael, good morning, my friend. Angel, hello from Alaska. Just up there, uh, not that far away from here. Pretty awesome. So how do we do this? How do we actually boost our sales? How do we scale our revenue? And more importantly, how can we dominate our, uh, our, the, the, the industry that we're working in? Well, here's the thing about this. The first and foremost thing you have to understand is that if we can take a look at people that are doing it, you can kind of start to see the little breadcrumbs of success that they're leaving behind, right? It's very important to understand that this is possible. I, I heard somebody say one time, well, you know what? It just doesn't seem like anybody's having success. They were referring to their uh, particular network marketing company. And they said, you know, I don't know if I can trust my upline. I don't know if I can trust this, that, or the other thing. They're saying all these things, but I'm not really seeing anybody succeeding. And I'm thinking, wow, that's kind of interesting. So I asked them because I wasn't familiar with their company. What's the name of the company? And after a preliminary search of that company, come to find out there are quite a few people that are having some measurable success. And I'm not just talking about itty bitty. I'm talking about some pretty serious stuff. So from that person's perspective, they were coming at it with a frame, a mind frame and, and a filter of lack, right? Um, they were coming at it from a place of scarcity. They were coming at it from a place of disbelief. And the fact of the matter is, you cannot receive if you don't believe, right? It's just not going to happen. So if you go out there with that mindset that's closed, it's going to be very hard to succeed. But what really does that mean? What does it mean? Because if you look and you actually see the people, let's say that you have that mindset for possibility. Let's, have, let's say your mind frame is dialed in for success, but you haven't quite seen those results yet and you know what you want. You're crystal clear on sort of the end game that you want to play for and you're seeing evidence of it. Right. So you're one of those people that actually sees the evidence of it. The question is, how can you convert that realization and that understanding into tangible results, into an actual business that's crushing, into a sales force that's that's making it happen, into a funnel that converts? How do we do this? Well, the natural response to that question is typically something of the sort of, well, I need to work on my capture page. I need to work on my thank you video. I need to work on my ads. I need to do this and do that. And we start thinking tactically. Right. And it comes up here inside the brain. And there's some true value to that, would you agree? I mean, there's some true value to having the tactical end dialed in. But then there's another piece to this that's extremely important. And I'm going to be talking about this. If you know what, or if you think you know what it is, I want to know in the chat box 
what you suppose that might be. What it is besides the tactics that are going to get you where you want to be. And more importantly, make the sales you want to make. Scale the revenue and make that huge uh, shift in the marketplace where you start to be seen as the leader in the market. What do you suppose that might be besides just being tactically proficient? If you know what that is, go ahead and uh, tile in it. Michael uh, Abershelli. Michael, if I butchered your name, I apologize, dude. I've been there. People have butchered mine. I know it's not great, but I apologize. It says, work on yourself. Hey, listen, exactly. And specifically, what do you mean, Michael? Specifically, what is it we have to work on in order to tangibly get the results? What is it we must do? Michael says, personal development. Absolutely. And again, specifically, what part of personal development must we work on? Uh, Angel Ray Whitney says, self-worth. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting down to it, Angel. I totally agree. It is a part of self-worth. Uh, Tony Stewart says mindset and expectation. Yes, yes, we're getting there. There's one specific area that I want to talk about today because there's a lot of things. And so all the things you guys are sharing, spot on, I 100% agree. In fact, we could probably create a year-long uh, series on how to dominate your industry, how to scale your revenue, and how to crush your sales based on everything that's being put in here. Um, and yes, you're right, uh, Michael, Ignite does cover this. Ignition, I think, is what you're talking about. Does cover this to a point. What I want to discuss today, though, is what you must do in order to be that person, who you must be in order to show up and actually get the sales. The first part you have to do is take a look and see who is getting the sales and who's, who's crushing the, the results that you want to get. The question is, do we model them? Now, I understand that we hear all the big motivational gurus talk about modeling success, but what does that actually mean? It's been my experience that people get somewhat confused and tripped over that. So if I can give you one small tweak, if I might offer that to you, here it would be. I want you to emulate, not imitate. Okay, now there's a very specific point to this word. And if you know the definition of the two words, you'll, you'll get it right away. Emulate instead of imitate. A lot of times, especially when I hear newer people get into the market, they go, okay, well, I'm going to model so-and-so, which means in their mind, they feel like they have to be a carbon copy of that person. Take a look at anybody in any industry that's crushing it, and that's probably a person that if that's the industry and they're getting the results you want, that you would want to model. But be very careful about this, all right? Modeling does not mean imitation. And I've seen this happen. In fact, I'm watching somebody do it right now. It's painful to watch. But what they're doing is imitating somebody that they are trying to model. So what do they do? They use the exact same font. They use the exact same introduction to their videos. They use the exact same approach. They try to basically be a carbon copy of this other person. Now, what's the danger of doing that? If you know what the danger to doing this is, type, type it into the chat box. Let me know what you might think that is. Tony Stewart says, success leaves clues. Exactly. Now, listen, this is key and essential. Success does leave clues. And this is how come we follow people and we look at them and say, okay, what is it they're doing? If you imitate somebody and you try to be that person to the point of almost modeling their dress, right? Like how they, how they put on their, you know, like how they dress, how they show up to their stuff, how they write. Sometimes I've even seen, I have lit, listen, as crazy as this sounds, I've actually seen people that will cut and paste other people, the people they're trying to, trying to uh, model, they will take their ad copy and basically just tweak the words a little bit. Now, I'm not talking about what we do when we talk about when we teach people how to uh, rewrite a blog post here, okay? Because we actually instruct you how to do that. There's uh, uh, permission that's given to you to do that with some of the EMP blogs, okay? So what I'm talking about is when a person tries to model a person in the industry's uh, approach to success and they pretty much plagiarize the person or try to become a carbon copy of it. So a lot of people, okay, here we go. I asked the question, what's the danger with that? Uh, and the, the danger is that it's not authentic. The danger is being perceived as a knockoff. Exactly. Now, here's what uh, a, um, uh, Angeline said. Emulate instead of imitate. And that is exactly what uh, my point is here. You want to emulate them. And so what's the difference between emulating and imitating? Think of it this way. If I imitate somebody, I'm basically trying to be them. For instance, if I'm a movie actor and I'm going to portray a famous character, I want to imitate who that person is, right? I'm going to imitate whomever that historical figure was. However, if I want to be a strong leader like that person, or if I want to have the results or something similar that a person in that industry or that 
particular field has achieved, what I will do is study how they, how they, how they approached, study how they prepared, study how they executed, and then start to do it on my terms, right? So if I know somebody, uh, for instance, who, who uh, got in fantastic shape by eating a hard, uh, high protein, low carb diet, I might put that into implementation for myself. But does that mean that I'm going to follow exactly what they ate every single day, eat exactly when they ate, worked out exactly how they worked out? Hopefully not. What I would do is emulate their approach. I would infuse the discipline. I would look at their strategy. I would look at some of the tactics that they implied or that they employed to get where they are, and then I would find out how it works for me. So remember, when you emulate somebody, what that means is you basically reverse engineer what they did, not their results, not their success. You reverse engineer their strategies. You reverse engineer some of the tactics that they imply, employed that supported that strategy, and then you put your own twist on it. You tweak it. You test it. You scratch the paint, ding the sheet metal. You make a few mistakes. Does this make sense? If this is making sense for you, type one in the chat box, meaning if you understand that modeling success does not mean imitating it, but rather emulating it, give me a one in the chat box. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, Jennifer Stover King. Hey, baby, what's going on? Infusing discipline. Exactly. That's what else it takes. Uh, Michael's coming back saying focus on action, not on the results. You bet. Uh, lots of folks dialing one in here, and that's important. Lots of ones coming in. Perfect. Okay, the next part to this is we want to question authority, all right? So if you're going to model the person that's successful, the next part to this might seem a little counterintuitive, but we're actually going to question that authority figure. We're going to question, is what they're doing really the best thing for the industry? Is it really best for my personal customers, clients, students, whomever you're approaching? And is it really best for me? So I've done this many times in my own career. I've looked at people that I look at as, as paragons of success or, or paragons of leadership and said, okay, that's amazing what they're doing, but is it really the path that I want to be going down? Is that a message I necessarily want to uh, you know, portray and, and live through my values, my vision, my mission, and my purpose? And what I have found is that you can find value in a lot of things that people say. For instance, when I first started off in my journey as a speaker and, and even as a, as a coach and as a consultant, I would reference uh, Gary Vaynerchuk quite a bit. I thought Gary Vaynerchuk was great, and I actually appreciated his, his uh, approach to hustle. What I found after a while, though, was that that message became convoluted. It actually got watered down, not necessarily by Gary himself, but by a lot of his fanatical fanboy and fangirl followers who just took one word and ran with it. What it turned out from being, hey, work really hard, stay disciplined, stay focused, stay committed to your dream, suddenly the word became, hustle became kill yourself. It, mean, it meant to ridicule other people if they weren't pacing with you. It meant basically glorifying uh, whatever it was you were doing over all else, sacrificing family, health, happiness even, even, even just living life itself. And pretty soon I started to see it become pretty ugly. And because of that misunderstood nature to that, I realized, okay, I get what he's saying, but I'm going to actually question this. And so I started challenging people whenever they said, man, I'm hustling my face off. I'm like, can you explain that a little bit more what that means? And they're like, listen, I go to bed at midnight, wake up at four. I don't care about my, you know, I, I don't have time to eat. I don't have time to do all this. And pretty soon they just basically started parroting and repeating without thinking about what they were saying, what other sort of motivational gurus were saying, especially people like Gary. And I thought, man, this is dangerous because you're not even thinking through this. And so I started asking them, you know, like, what are your values around that? They're like, screw values, dude. I don't, need, I don't have time for that. All I'm, I'm too busy hustling my face off. All right, that's fine. You know, what's your big vision for what you want to achieve? Man, I want to make as much money as I can in a shorter period of time so I can go out there and crush, dominate, and power through, you know, whatever. All right, that's fine too. What's your mission here? Like, what is it you're really try, trying to achieve? And they would give very fuzzy sort of uh, materialistic approaches to that answer. And that's fine. You know, if that's their mission, no judgment whatsoever. The question that I then asked them was, how effective is this for your overall life? Are you truly happy? Are you getting the results you want? Or are you spending a lot of times hustling, i.e. spinning your wheels in the mud and not really getting anywhere? And whether they wanted to be truthful or not with me or more importantly with themselves, they ultimately came to the realization, many people, that they weren't really getting where they wanted to go in the timeline that was appropriate for them. So, that's how come, that's an example of the time when I started to question the authority, in my industry at least, around certain things that were being said. Now again, 
When you question authority, it doesn't mean that you make them wrong, okay? It doesn't mean that you're calling them out and bad-mouthing them. It doesn't even mean that you don't agree with them. It just means that we question things. And my friends, listen, this is super important. This is a leadership uh, principle that I really want you to kind of think about, critical thinking. The ability to listen to somebody with an open mind, all right? Listen to them with an open heart, receive what they're here what they're saying actually really listen to them without the intent of looking for your chance to interfuse you know infuse your thoughts and and wait for them to stop talking so that you can start talking but really listening deeply to them and taking their words in and saying does this work for me does this make sense for me now if the answer is eh, it kind of works for me or it kind of makes sense is that okay absolutely does it necessarily make them wrong? No, it doesn't make them wrong. I think Gary Vaynerchuk's a great guy. I totally respect what he's done and what he continues to do. And, and, I, and I can appreciate where he's coming from in life because he, he's coming from a place that's authentic for him. But for somebody, in my case, for me to, to approach business and life like that would be very inauthentic. It would be very dangerous. And so that's what I'm challenging you with is it's okay to look at somebody. It doesn't matter who they are. And again, I hope you get that I'm not picking on Gary Vaynerchuk here. I'm just using it as an example and trying to be as completely forthright as I can with you guys. If you find somebody that has gotten great results in your industry or even an industry that you respect and you go, man, I could model that. And by modeling, I know it's about emulation, not imitation. And then you ask yourself, but is it true or is that really working for me? Isn't it kind of a cool place to come from? Now we're thinking critically. We're not just blindly receiving information just because everybody else is, is giving this person all these props, right? It's okay to say, hey, I don't necessarily agree with everything Tony Robbins says. In fact, I challenge you to question me. I challenge you to question Fernie. I challenge you to question anybody that you're learning from here because I'll tell you this, every single one of your mentors and leaders here in the uh, EMP community, we put our ego to the side. It's okay. We realize that we make mistakes. We realize we don't know everything. In fact, we realize that in some cases, you may actually know more than we do about certain things. That's pretty cool. We, we're open to that. We welcome that kind of stuff. And if you're open to sharing your greatness with us, then don't we all become better? The answer is absolutely 100% yes. Now, if this is landing for you, if this is making sense, give me a two in the chat box. I want to see what's going on out there. Be authentic and be real. Uh, that's what people are looking for. That's what Angeline's saying. Absolutely agree with you, Angeline. And, and I'll tell you what, here's what's really important about that is the authenticity and the, and the part about being real, I'm going to get to here in just a second. But it's super, super important that we remember that, okay, about being authentic and real. Lots of great comments coming in here. Lots of twos, people chiming in twos. This is awesome. Okay, the next part of this, though, if you want to boost your sales, if you want to increase your revenue, if you want to really dominate your, your industry, you have to realize that there's a part of this where we have to kind of pull back, all right? It's one thing to emulate success. It's another thing to question authority. And then there's another part where we have to go to a new level, and that is we actually have to pull away from consuming the information entirely. What I mean by this is taking a fast from social media. Now, this is key and essential. I want you to pay close attention for those of you who are using Facebook or social media to market your business. Am I saying don't do that? Am I saying turn your Facebook ads off? Am I saying don't go on LinkedIn? Am I saying don't use Pinterest or, or Instagram or whatever platform you're using? The answer is absolutely not. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is get away from being a consumer and focus on being a producer, meaning don't be a consumer of the information. Don't be in that blind scroll where you're just watching what all the gurus and all the big shots are putting out. Stop doing that. Stop looking at what all the followers, all the fanboys and all the fangirls are liking and pinning and sharing and doing all that stuff. And instead, focus on being the person that produces the stuff that people like and share and pin and repost and, and put, put out there for other people to see. Start focusing on being the producer of the information. This past weekend in the workshop, we were talking about content creation. We talk about this on day two. And one thing that I was talking to people about is we're drowning in information. We live in the information age. We got enough information out there to literally you know, cover the entire planet 10,000 times over. The information is not what we're starving for. What we're really starving for is meaning. And the meaning 
comes from taking that information that's floating around and putting it in our brains. Now, once you've done that, once you've actually learned something, you actually internalize it, right? You, you put it in and, and make that information work for you. You take it in and you go, okay, that, that makes sense. I'm actually going to internalize this. I'm going to intellectualize this information and it actually makes sense to me. Now it becomes knowledge. But the challenge about that is now it went from being an external thing, this information, to becoming an internal thing, which is your knowledge. What we have to do next is test it. We have to put it out there. So just like I was talking about a minute ago with questioning authority, now what we have to do is say, okay, well, if that kind of works for me or that doesn't work at all, let me test it against the real world. Let me put it into work in my business. Let me put it to work into my ad copy. Let me put it into work just even sharing my message out there on a Facebook Live, a blog post, and so on. When you do this, that information goes from being just ones and zeros of, of noise into the, into the knowledge in your brain. And now when you put it into action, it becomes wisdom. And when you have wisdom, you have something very valuable. You have an asset that you can share with people. And that's where people really start to shift away from just seeing you as another person in the industry and start seeing you as a leader. This, my friends, is key and essential. I really want you to get this, all right, because what we're talking about here is getting away from being a consumer, right, of the social media and all the other stuff out there and actually being a producer. But the, before we can actually get to that place, we have to train ourselves to break the habit of just mindlessly going through, following all the gurus, following all the quote-unquote leaders and saying, wow, they're so smart, but who am I, right? Now we get away from that and one of the very first steps to doing that. One of the very first steps from just observing a big dog and actually running with the big dogs and, some, and then uh, eventually being seen as a big dog is to get away from being a consumer and start moving toward being a producer of content, being a producer of information, being a producer of wisdom. And that's what's most important. People don't need any more info, all right? They, don't, they just don't need that anymore. What they really need is meaning. They need to understand what's in it for them, how it's impacting you, and how they might be able to be impacted by it as well. And isn't it interesting? When we do that, all of a sudden we shift away from just being that person that's watching other people succeed into being the person that leads by example. Pretty powerful stuff, yes? If this is working for you, give me a three in the chat box. I want to see some folks out there. Uh, when you have wisdom, you have an asset you can share with people. Jennifer Stover King nailed it. And that's right. And here's, by the way, there, uh, uh, Michael says, there's no secret formula for success. Be yourself, be authentic, be a producer, which is what I'm going to get to in just a second. Okay, I see lots of threes in the chat box. Lots of, okay, cool, man. A flood of threes, which is telling me that uh, not only am I live and you guys are catching me, but more importantly, that the message is landing for you. And listen, here's the thing. This is what you want to model. All right. This is the stuff that you actually want to go out and model, not because I'm telling you to say it, but because if you're catching it, if it's a three for you, then obviously it must somehow mean something to you. And that's what is really important. OK, my friends, that's what's important. And it actually brings me to the final point of the day. And you guys have been doing an amazing job of hinting at this to this point, And that is you've got to bring yourself. All right. It's not just about being yourself. It's about actually bringing it out here. Now, this in and of itself can, for some people, be the single most frightening, most fear-based thing they've done in a very long time, and that is to put themselves out there on social media, to put themselves out there and present themselves as a leader. Now, notice I didn't say an expert. I didn't say the, the go-to guru. I didn't say the preeminent know-it-all person in the industry on this topic. That's not what I said. Because a true leader doesn't need to be seen that way. A true leader's ego is in check. A true leader knows, hey, I'm going to give you the best of what I have right here, right now. It may work for you. It may not. Take what works for you and leave the rest behind. I'm okay with that. I'm just simply here to take one step at a time. And if I can be one step ahead of you or two steps ahead of you, or if you want to walk shoulder to shoulder with me, or if you want to walk one step ahead of me and I'll have your back, I'll support you every step of the way, that's okay with me. That, that's true leadership. But in order for that to work, you got to bring yourself. It's one thing to be a student of the game, you know? It's one thing to, to look at leaders and go, wow, that person's really great, but I'm not going to put them on a pedestal, I'm going to emulate them. 
It's another thing to say to yourself, you know what, actually, I am going to question their authority. I'm going to question what's being told to me. I'm going to find out what, what I can take from what JT is saying and, and the stuff that doesn't work for me, I'll put it to the side. And to be able to say to ourselves, okay, cool, I'm going to take that, that social media fast, like JT said. doesn't mean I'm going to block, out, block it out. I'm just, instead of consuming it, I'm actually going to produce it. Give yourself 30 days to get away from being the consumer and only focus on being a producer. That's all fine and dandy. But man, I'll tell you what, where the real power is, where the, t- where the, where the rubber really meets the road, is when you bring yourself to the equation. When you put your take on it. When you listen and you study and you take that beginner's mind, that student's mind, and you put that information into knowledge and the knowledge into wisdom and share it with the world and boldly go out there, flip the Facebook Live on, stare into that camera, knowing that it's not a camera. It's not a, it's not a laptop. It's not a webcam. It's not a smartphone. It's the portal into somebody's heart. It's the pathway into somebody's mind. It's a powerful responsibility to show up as that leader, to give them hope, to give them tools, to give them possibility, and to open the door for them. Now, you can't make them walk through that door. You can't necessarily have them stay hopeful or get them off the couch. That's, that's, that's up to them. And you certainly cannot change their life. Only they can do that. And only you can do that for yourself. But when you bring yourself each and every single day, you bring it fully, 100%, not holding anything back, not filtering yourself because of fear of being accepted or fear of being rejected or fear of what think people may think of you or judge you by, but instead bringing your 100% authentic self to it, That's where the magic happens, all right? That's where the difference is made, and that's how you lead by example. And so, my friends, today and every single day, remember this. It's Listen, if you want to crush your sales, it's not just about having a strong sales funnel. It's not just about having some worded script that's super slick and uses NLP and gets people to kind of think a different way. No, 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 no. It first and foremost starts with emulating the success, not imitating it. It starts with questioning the authority of that success figure and asking what actually works for me and what, uh, what about this doesn't necessarily work. What might I do differently about it? How might I put my spin on it? It's about sometimes taking a fast. Instead of bombarding yourself with constant, a constant deluge of information, instead, let's do this. Let's make a commitment for the next 30 days to get away from just being a consumer to being an actual producer. And more importantly, whatever you bring to the market, whatever message, whatever energy, whatever, whatever you provide, whatever you contribute, make sure it's coming from you. 100% you, not filtered, not tweaked, 100% unfiltered, 100% authentic. And that my friends makes all the impact and all the difference in the world. Hey, if this is working for you, give me a five as in a long distance high five out there. Love you guys. means the world to me that you're showing up to these things. And yet I still want to make sure that you're out there committed to yourself, committed to your values, your vision, your mission, and your purpose, and committed to sharing that stuff because there's a lot of people out there that are hurting. All right. A lot of people that are confused, a lot of people that want better, but for whatever reason, they're not doing it for themselves. And sometimes they just need an amazing example, an example that you can share. All right, cool. Lots of fives coming in. That makes me happy. I love to see that. All right. Well, listen, this is the end of today, but guess what? Tomorrow we're going to have another amazing mentor come out and share their wisdom with you. So make sure you're joining us here each and every single Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And We're going to be showing this up every single Monday through Friday. Here's the beautiful thing. It's going to be 10 times more impactful if you join us at No Excuses. Do not make the excuse. I understand there are a lot of things that go into play. Child care, the cost of airfare, hotel. I totally understand that. But remember this. The impact that you will receive and feel 
and the impact that you can therefore make is going to be a hundred times, maybe a thousand times, maybe infinitely, maybe incalculable how big it will be by getting yourself in the room live with those people that have been there, walked the walk, and now are able to share their message here, we, here with you in a pretty awesome place. Love to see you guys there. Hope to see you guys there. It's going to be an amazing three days. With that said, we're closing it out. And remember, no matter what course you fly in life, fly high, fly fast, and fly far. We'll see you all very soon. Have an amazing Tuesday. We'll see you back here tomorrow with another mentor on the EMP Daily Dose of Awesome. Have a great one, my friends.